And it, then it was so fortunate that Derry was just, you know, I was reading in the papers about the, like, Dermy McLenahan that I'll introduce you to and Damon McCann and people like that. They were blocking the bridge with this caravan that this man had to live on. They were blocking, not the bridge, sorry, they were blocking the road down there at Brandywell. The cops were beating people up. It was a man had no home and he had to live in an old uh, caravan, which was, you know, meant he was living in extreme cold, damp conditions. And so the, on a, on a, the Housing Action Committee put the caravan out and blocked the road and no cars could go past, nothing, and made a big issue of it. Direct action they did. Derry was the most glaring example of the discrimination in Northern Ireland. It's the second biggest city. Two thirds of the population were Catholic, and they were all whore pushed into one ward. And then the other third was Protestant, and they were separated into two wards. And each ward could elect the same number of councillors. So the one-third of the population of the city had two-thirds of the councillors, and they controlled the city. And then they elected a housing committee, and the housing committee gave all its powers to the mayor, so the mayor could decide who got a house, completely unchecked. And that was power and dairy, because you had to be able to decide where everybody lived, because that's where you could vote. Now, on top of that, there was another factor. They had a property qualification for voting. Everybody had a vote, but if you had a house, you had more than one vote, you had two votes. You know, if you had more houses and so on, it was the poll tax forerunner. And uh, now that was discrimination against the Protestant working class as well. But, so that was the city at that time. And then people looked at America, saw what was happening there. Also, you know, more and more young people got educated. Sectarianism began to weaken a little bit. And then the movement began to start. And uh, when that, those demonstrations and all began to start, there was a real anti-sectarian consciousness that uh, we mustn't be separated along religious lines. And all the marches and demonstrations, there was an effort to involve the Protestant working class. And just up here, about 10 minutes walk from here, the fountain, where so a lot of Protestant workers lived at that time, it's always an effort to bring them in together. But every demonstration you had at that time, the cops would make it a sectarian demonstration. It forced you to walk in the Catholic neighborhoods. Wouldn't let you through, I remember, physical fighting to try and get the march through into non-sectarian neighborhoods. But they knew what they were doing. They were very conscious of what they were doing. And um, the, uh, uh, so the, that was, there was a struggle around that. Now, the leadership of the, the Unionist and Protestant movement in Northern Ireland they were afraid of their own working class. So they were whooping them up, especially Paisley, but all of them, whooping them up and saying, look, you see that civil rights movement? They want to take your job and give it to a Catholic. They want to take your house and give it to a Catholic. That was their line. Now this had an echo amongst Protestant workers, but our movement then within itself had a big fight, had a big struggle. Because people like myself and others on the left, people like the Derry Labour Party, the Young Socialists, we said we got to counter this and argue against this. Our position is that we are not for just sharing out the poverty. We want a job for everybody, a house for everybody, and we want to appeal to the Protestant workers to get together with the Catholic workers and fight for a house for everybody, a job for everybody, a better minimum wage, uh, a program of public works that creates a job for everybody. But the leadership of the civil rights movement, which was dominated by a number of forces, one that was dominated by increasingly, increasingly by representatives of the Catholic Church, uh, 
the Republican movement, who were dominated by the Communist Party at that stage, and just in general conservative Catholic uh, individuals. And they didn't want to hear anything about this at all. They didn't want to hear this because if you're going to have a house for everybody, a job for everybody, then you challenge the system. And we were challenging the system. And we said the only way you can have this is by ending capitalism and having socialism. And we lost that battle within the civil rights movement and within the Catholic areas at that time. She had, this, this would have been 67, 68, 69. Mm -hmm. Then she came and got involved in Derry in 69. Like, I remember we had a meeting to try and put this really into the forefront. And there was a big mo uh, march and demonstration in Straban. Bernadette Devlin was on the platform, Eamon McCann was on the platform, I was on the platform, and we worked out who was going to speak first, second, and third. And we, the, just as I'm explaining it to you now, we, that was, and that was an official meeting of the Civil Rights Movement. So that was our first attempt to breach that domination of the Civil Rights Movement by the Catholic nationalist position. And uh, uh, that, those ideas that I'm trying to explain, yes, they were part of the movement. They were much part, greater part of the movement of the more left, but people heard those ideas. Then, in 1969, in August, you had the uprising in the Bogside. And then out of that came the election of the Bogside Defence Association.